Hi, this is Aaron Hackney, product owner for Cisco Defense Orchestrator. And today I'd like to do a quick demonstration on how to install the Secure Device Connector and Secure Events Connector on your own Ubuntu system. The SDC and the SEC are used to connect legacy systems like the ASA and iOS devices that don't understand cloud connectivity or CDO connectivity. And normally what you would do when you install these is go to Tools and Services, Secure Connector, You'd create your new SDC, and you would download a VM image, which is for VMware. Now, there are a lot of people that don't have a VMware installation, or maybe they use another hypervisor like Nutanix and may wish to run the SDC on their own system or their own Linux system, whether it's bare metal or a virtual system. The SDC and the SEC are actually just a couple of Docker containers. So really the VM image that we provide is just the Linux system that brings Docker to the table. So that way you can pull and run the SDC and SEC Docker images. So we've made this easy for you on your own Ubuntu system uh, by creating a script or a, a number of scripts here for you to, to deploy these services. So currently these are tested against Ubuntu 20.04 and 2204, Focal and Jammy which are the current uh, long-term support Ubuntu distributions. And so let's get started. There's a couple of scripts that are involved here. Uh, the, the documentation is pretty decent. There's a quick start if you're interested in that. But what we're gonna do is uh, just go over how to do this on, a, on an Ubuntu system. So if I go to my Ubuntu server here um, and I can verify that that's what I'm on here. Let's see, let's just take a quick look at OS release, and you can see here that I'm on a, an Ubuntu 2204 Jammy system, right? And so the way that we use this script is the first thing we do is we head over to GitHub. The name of the project is CDO Deploy SDC, located in the Cisco DevNet collection. And if we go to this repo and go to code, we're just gonna click the, the clone URL. Uh, Git is already installed on both Jammy and Focal when you uh, do a, a basic installation of these. So I'm just gonna do a Git clone uh, for that URL, we're going to change into that directory. And if we look here, we'll see that there's a number of executable scripts. There's one called install Docker, there's one called deploy, and there's one called delete. The Docker that comes with Ubuntu uh, that you can install either during the installation process or using apt install uh, is not really the recommended version. If you head over to Docker's website, they'll kind of explain that to you. And so what we've done is we've made a script to make it easy to deploy the community edition of Docker that's sort of the recommended version of Docker to install. So if I just do a dot slash install docker.sh and notice that I'm just in as a regular user, I'm not in as a, as a super user or as a root user. Uh, and I'm also not using the, the sudo command here. Inside of the script, there are some sudo commands. So it will prompt you for credentials. And as always, take a look at the source code. I never like to give my credentials to a script unless I know exactly what it's doing with my credentials, right? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run that. You'll notice that it detected that I'm running uh, Jammy 2204. It also looked at my architecture so it knows what kind of Docker image to pull for the correct CPU architecture. Uh, and then it asked me if I want to uninstall the legacy Docker package that might have been installed by Ubuntu at installation time. Uh, you'll notice here it's asking for my password. And again, that's because uh, I'm running some sudo commands to do things like apt install and some other things like that to install Docker. So what it's going to do is it's actually following the Docker recommended procedure where we go into uh, the apt system and we add the official Docker community edition as part of the trusted uh, repos. And so it's uh, doing that right now. Um, and then once it's finished with that and through the magic of video editing, we'll make this go really fast. Once we've added the apt repository of the official Docker community edition repository, we can go in and install Docker using our apt install commands. Again, that's all done for you inside of the script. Now we can see that we've completed installing Docker and it even does a quick look to make sure that the Docker service is up and running. In addition to installing Docker, it also adds the current user to the Docker's permission group, right? So the group that has permissions to issue Docker commands. So I should be able to run commands like Docker PS to see if there's any Docker containers running and such, right? If I didn't have the right Docker permissions, I wouldn't be able to do such a command. So we know that we've got Docker up and running, uh, it's in a good place, and now we're ready to actually install the SDC containers. Let's take another look at the directory of, of uh, things here. And you'll notice that we've got this deploy SDC script. 
So with a deploy SDC script, it actually just takes one parameter. And that parameter is what we call the bootstrap data that's provided for you when you create an SDC inside of Cisco Defense Orchestrator. And again, when you when I selected create a new service connector, it actually gave me the CDO bootstrap data here. So I'm just gonna click that copy button. I'm gonna run over here to my deploy SDC script, and I'm just gonna paste that right after the deploy sdc.sh command. And you'll notice it's quite a few lines of, of information, and it's just a base 64 encoded string of information, but that's what the script needs to actually operate and get you onboarded into CDO. And that's it. That's, that's the only parameter you have to provide is just the bootstrap data. So I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna install some prerequisite packages that we need. So things like net tools and, and uh, the AWS CLI tools and things that the uh, container needs. And then once that's finished, we'll actually go and pull the SDC Docker images that are bespoke to your particular installation and linked to your CDO tenant. Now that the AWS client has been installed, we'll now create a new user called SDC. And once we've got that user created, we're then going to do sudo into that user. And we're going to begin the bootstrap process where we take the bootstrap payload that was provided to the script at the runtime. And we're going to start pulling the needed images from the Docker registry for the SDC. All right, so the Docker images have been downloaded and they've been extracted and they went ahead and ran. So what you'll see is we've issued a command uh, as part of the script to automatically show that the Docker container is up and running, right? So we see the name of my SDC that should match what's in CDO. And we also see that it's been up for six seconds now, uh, up for one second rather, created six seconds ago. And we can double check that if we like, right? If we wanna make sure that the Docker container is still up and running, just a Docker PS, and we'll see that it is still running, right? So we've been up for 30 seconds now. So if we jump back over to CDO, we'll uh, hit the OK button here. It is up and running and, and available. This SDC3 um, is the one that we just added, and we'll see that it is active. So once we've installed the SDC, we're now ready to start onboarding things like ASA devices or iOS devices using that SDC. Now we can also take log messages from those, those ASA devices. So I can take an ASA and, and stream the syslog at this same Ubuntu system that's running uh, the SDC. We can also install something called the SEC, the Secure Events Connector. And the Secure Events Connector is a syslog listener. So it will listen for UDP syslog, TCP syslog, and even NetFlow data coming from ASAs and send them up to the CDO cloud where you can view those things up here in analytics and event logging. And so to get that SEC built on this system, it's just another Docker container. Uh, the good news is it's really easy. In fact, I didn't even need to write a script for this one. I'm just gonna hit the little plus button. I'm gonna go in and say, okay, now that I have that SDC, I wanna add this SEC, this secure events connector. So I'll click that button. Now here's the thing that uh, some folks might get tripped up on. You don't want to grab this top bootstrap data because that's for the SDC. We're wanting to install the SEC. So we want to grab this SEC bootstrap data. And you'll notice that it's only valid here for another hour. So you've got about an hour to install this once you've generated this bootstrap data. Then I'm going to go back over to my CLI. I need to sudo over to impersonate the SDC user to act on behalf of the SDC user. As part of the script that we created earlier for the SDC, it created a new home directory for that user under user uh, local CDO. You'll notice here that we have a directory called toolkit. So I'm gonna change into that toolkit directory. And if we look there, we'll find a, an executable called sec.sh. And that's what we're gonna run to install the sec configuration. So I'm gonna do a dot slash uh, sec.sh and hit enter. And we'll see that one of the commands that it's asking for is the setup command. So we're just gonna run the sec.sh setup. And now it's asking for the bootstrap data. Now that's what we saw earlier inside of CDO. Remember, I want the stuff under step two, the sec bootstrap data. I'm gonna click copy, go back over here and just paste that in. It's gonna start the onboarding process. So it's gonna talk to CDO and then it's gonna pull down the correct container and it's gonna go ahead and start that container up for us. Now that the container is up and running, let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll see that it still may show the onboarding state. It may take a few minutes for it to go from onboarding to active, but rest assured if the container is up and running within a few minutes, we should see this go from onboarding to active. Well, that's it. That's how you install an SDC and SEC using these shell scripts that we've provided to make your life just a little bit easier to deploy an SDC or SEC on an Ubuntu system of your choice, be it virtual or physical. 
and you're off to the races. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.